Dr. Paula Price. Well, guys, it's Thursday, and Prophet Ashley didn't pick up her cue today, so we'll forgive her. And I'll just start the show to say, I'm here. And not only am I here, I am ready to talk to you today and to share some things with you. We have a beautiful sunny day here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to thank everybody who has tuned in from Periscope. Hi, Periscope. You know, you guys are really making this thing great. You're taking it around the world. You're powerful. And I'm telling you, together, we are a mighty force. You know, there are times you need a team, and then, folks, there are times you need a force. And we are a mighty force. Now, before I get too deep in, we're going to do the, my, my extra training, as Prophet Ashley um, named it. We're going to do extra training, and then after extra training, we are going to go to the phones. And so, later on, we'll tell you the block talk number, because some of you didn't know I stay on for the phone for another hour taking calls. I take live calls every Thursday. What's ma what makes them exciting? I never know who's going to call, and I never know what they're going to ask. And so, it's totally unscripted, and we just talk to the people of God. So, if you want to ask me a question, or get a prayer, or hear from the Lord on anything after the 12 o'clock hour here Central Time, then you migrate on over to Blog Talk Radio. And while we're at it, hi, Blog Talk. You know, Blog Talk is the oldest child. And so they're the, they're the reason we got to where we are today. So make sure you listen in so you can get that telephone number. Some of you all know it, and maybe a few periscopers will just put it on the screen for everybody else to catch. But that's a, a whole different segment. So we have actually two segments. We've got that, and then we've got the calling, and you get to hear your friends and, and uh, you know, sisters and brothers in the Lord get their issues addressed. That's a fun part. So now you found out the whole thing about the Paul Price Show on Thursday, what makes it different. Now, when you go to blogtalkradio.com, you can listen to all of the shows. We have, we have hundreds, hundreds. You want to get some ideas on how to counsel, you want to know God's thoughts on this or that, or you want to know how I address this or that issue, and we address a myriad of issues. Then go to Blog Talk and just listen in. Last thing I want to tell you before we move into it, and we'll probably let see if Prophet Ashley found her voice. Hallelujah. So, but the last thing I want to tell you is that um, <clears throat> tonight is prophetic at night. Make sure you share, share Periscope, share, 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 and share, Block Talk, share, because this was amazing. You know, Tuesday night, before we got off, they said, oh, that Tuesday night, they, they'd already said that over 70,000 people had seen our post. That's amazing. That's you. That's you. You're doing that. This morning, that's gone up between then and now, over 75,000 people have had an opportunity to listen to this. That is you. You're doing it, and it's amazing. I'm excited. So make sure you share. Tonight, by popular request, some of you all need a Prophet Ashley, and she came and needled me a little bit. We are going to resume Jezebel Prophets. That was such a well-received show, and tonight we're going to lay out some signs, some prophecies, etc., for you to recognize them in action. Don't forget, tonight, Prophetic Ed, 8 p.m., Jezebel Prophets, and share, invite your class, invite your students, invite your church, churches, uh, uh, your networks, uh, your apostles and prophets in your life, the leaders, because a lot of us, you know what I realized today, I was talking with the Lord yesterday, and uh, I tell you what I realized, not everybody's trying to fire Jesus. You know, a lot of people want Jesus to stay Jesus Christ in charge. Not everybody is trying to get rid of him, and not everybody is trying to do him wrong. And sometimes we just don't have enough information to match our spiritual unction so that we can articulate what ha is happening and what to do about it. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I Periscope. That's why I've been doing Blog Talk Radio. That is why I've been doing Facebook on Tuesday and Thursday nights because that not everybody is ready to get rid of Jesus Christ. And, you know, to listen to our media and all of that, mm -mm. I say to people often, Jesus has been more successful than we give him credit for being. He has been quite successful. 
He has been, I mean, because you know why I know this? He may not harass you. He may not nag you. It may seem like he's, you know, gone because he's working in the background silently, not intruding in your life, letting you have your thoughts, letting you make your own decisions like a good dad would, letting you have your own trial and error. He may be doing all of that, but he's not gone. And when he gets ready to step up and do God from within his people and within all of the souls that he has entered over the decades, he does God and he flips us. And he switches us in a moment. And I know that because you can listen to some of the people, secular or not, and you can hear that piece of Jesus down in there. You know, there's a piece of Jesus in a lot of folk. Now, they may not want to want to chase him. They may not want to sit up in his church. They might not want to read Bible and have Bible study, but they're not ready to fire him. They, they said, Come, we need to keep him now just in case we need somebody bigger than you and I, somebody who has all power, somebody who has all authority, someone who has all dominion. They may need to do, come on now. So uh, I say that to you to say, share this with everybody. Don't assume Jesus is not where you, where you assume he isn't because sometimes he's just letting people work out their lives their way and to come to the end of themselves. Nobody is better at letting you come to the end of yourself than God. Our God, who he will let you make all of the most colossal errors and fumblings and whatever and you know, before he gets involved. And that's why he said, when you call on the name of the Lord. And so we, we in, in, you know, Paul recalls that scripture said, well, when you call on the name of the Lord. But what, there's another piece of that out of a pure heart or a sincere heart. When you really want God to get involved, he'll get involved. When you hope he'll take you out of it <clears throat> so that you can avoid it, then he'll, he's not going to do it. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, Prophet Ashley, did you find your voice? Yes, and I also found what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> what it's day Thursday is it? morning, not Thursday night. <laughs> I was like, right. Different show. Different show. Good to hear you, because I'm on a lot now. I'm on I a lot it. this week. And, well, I don't know if, if a lot of our listeners know, our longtime prayer and goal has been Everyday TV. That's true. For Dr. Paula Price. Mm -hmm. Everyday TV. Everyday TV. And this has been for years. Who was it? Prophet Tala said that first? Or mm -hmm. you were together? You, you, you did. You did. You did. You did. Okay, when you two were first, you know, strategizing about what is this and our goals, Everyday TV, Dr. Paula Price. And we are pushing toward that goal. And now with the assistance of resources that did not did not exist, technology mm -hmm. that did not exist right. before, we can see you every single day. Mm -hmm. Fresh word, rewind, instant rewind, <laughs> word, whatever the case may be, all of that amazing revelation coming down from heaven. It's, it's just uh, a wonderful thing to be a part of. Awesome. Making history. Because how many people say, people don't want to hear from apostles because, you know, it's just too heavy. And realizing, but people don't want to hear that. <laughs> from apostles. From apostles. <laughs> they want to hear something, but not that. What they want to hear is what they don't know about, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. We when, when we tune into you every single day, it's like you should see some of these quotes. No, the hour can't be over. No, we have to be over. <laughs> we tune in every day. I mean, it is like... Uh, the regular season premiere every <laughs> single week because we don't know what's going to come out of heaven. I know, know it. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that is the truth. Like Tuesday night when we had sugar time. How many of you oh, yes. us? Sugar time. You remember? We got to yes. sugar up the Lord. Hashtag oh. sugar time. Hashtag. Hashtag. That's the new phrase. Hashtag, Hashtag sugar time. Sugar time. You get, when your praise gets really, really good. good. You know? Hashtag sugar time. See, how many of you all were with me for the sugar time? Do I have any sugar timers on, on uh, Periscope today? I know I must have a couple. Honey, I mean, but you know what I thought about it was Jesus absolutely loved sugar time. Yeah, it was good. He enjoyed it. But we get a chance to love our Savior. You know, Ashley, what I want to do and what's been in my passion is to for people to love God again overtly. God is tired of those co covert things. Will you meet them at the little Motel 6 to have a wonderful time and then Come forget on. where he was? God wants, I want to be center stage. I want to be king of kings. I want to be Lord of, I don't want to be your, 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 your dust off and your fix up and your touch up. I want to be sovereign. And God is good. What I've learned is God is responsive. 
He is affectionate, deeply affectionate. We don't even realize it because we so force him into his official roles and we lock him into his official roles and his official duties so much. We don't ever let him off duty to enjoy his life with us. You know, and sometimes you need somebody to come along mm -hmm. and say, you know what? God likes sugar. He loves praise. He wants you. God, who in the world wants to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't even want to speak to you until you hit a certain time at night and you're given 15 minutes and you're out? And then you wonder why God won't stretch out for you. God's still in this box. You didn't unpack him. Well, I think you hit on a key thing there, Dr. Price. You said someone, somebody. Mm -hmm. And usually we treat God, we don't treat him like an actual person with feelings and preferences and things that move him and emotions. Even though scripture is full of that. Oh my goodness. That's, and again, the danger of not knowing the Old Testament in particular is you really don't know God, the person. Mm -hmm. He broke down his persona, his preferences, his things that set him off and the things that calm him down. Things that make him happy. All of it is in there. But I like how you said it. There are God's a person. And he was a person before you became one. So God has mastered personhood. Yeah. And the Lord Jesus came to the planet to give us a visual aid of the personhood of God Almighty. And he's a sugar. I remember when I first started walking with the Lord, which is 1982. And I said, you know, but Jesus... I have not, if anybody had told me you were like this, I probably wouldn't gotten saved a long time ago. I, I, he, and he set it up. God set up the terms of our relationship when I didn't know what they meant. But what I did know, I remember actually driving in my car one day, mm -hmm. and this is 1982. It might have been, I want to say November, only because I had just gotten the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and so um, I was driving in my car, and I said, Lord. We're compatible, and I don't know why, and I don't know how. My spirit was so aware and awakened to the Lord Jesus Christ, I knew that I was perfectly compatible with him. Now, I didn't know him, so I know that that was my eternal self speaking mm -hmm. in, on, in a temporal moment. And I just said, but I'm compatible with God, you know? And as we go forward, you know, I like this conversation because some of you all love the Lord, but you've been talked out of really being affectionate with God by your leaders, by people who don't want to be bothered. You know, there are marriages where they never want to touch each other. There are marriages where they don't even want to have dinner together. There are relationships where all they want to do is sit in each person in their own quiet space reading paper. But then there are others where they're very affectionate. They want to be together and all of that. Well, I feel like that with God. I don't want to be without God. I go to bed at night saying, now listen, I know that there are other people who say that, but this is how I feel about you. Now, when I first started doing that, he was real quiet. He didn't say much, okay? But then after a while... He kind of said, but, but, but then you say this is how we are going to be. And so I started, one day I just started doing some different things with him. I would just start, just I just would sweeten them up. I just call him endearing names. I'd call him pet names. And he'd respond. And I'm like, so God, you're responsive. He said, when you, he said, when you come near me and treat me, as if I'm holy, I'm going to respond. When you treat me with respect, I'm going to respond. And I said, really? So I just kept pushing the envelope. And the more I did, the more he opened up. I just kept pushing the envelope. I kept saying, okay, well, if that worked, let's try this. And if that worked, and I would always, when I would read my Bible or I would um, do my studies, I wouldn't act as if he's someplace else. I would act as if he wrote the Bible. I'd read the Bible. You know, I'm sharing my secrets. Do you want me to hear my little inner secrets? Yes. These are my inner I'm going to say yes, everybody. <laughs> yes. I said, yes, everybody. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do a form now just in case they can't say it. And I would read my Bible. Lots of hearts going up right See? here. See? Right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, oh, we yeah. Wanna, this is my inner secrets. You know, this is my inner interpersonal relationships with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say glory. Huh? I'm going to say glory. Yes, he's my sugar. He's my honey. And so I would read my Bible and I'd study. And so... He would say, I would say, and I'd say, Jesus. And I'd read something out loud that astounded me. And, and I would ask, but well, Jesus, what, what, what was on your mind? What were you thinking? Lord? Why did you do that? God, what was that? And you know, he would talk to me. Sometimes he'd answer me in a moment. Sometimes he'd answer me weeks or months later. Because sometimes God has to build the mental 
infrastructure for the answers you are asking him to, for the answer to your question. Sometimes you don't have the mental backdrop or framework for the answer to the land the way it should. And so when he, when I, when he started doing it, and it would crack me up, because I always said, Jesus, that's why I know you never leave, because he would answer something I asked him a year ago as if I just asked him five minutes ago. I said, yeah, because this is one continuous time to you. I had sunrise and sunset. You just had you. And so he'd come back and ask the questions for me. I would ask him to give me revelations on different things. And again, sometimes in a moment he would do it. And then after that, and every time he did, I always sweetened him up. I did. I did not. When God answered me, I, I made a rule. Whenever God related to me or responded to me, I never ignored him. I never treated it as if it's something he had to do. Because far too many people don't know he's God. Far too many people enter the planet, leave the planet, and never know there is a God. And if they, there is, they never know that he's tender, he's loving, he's personable, he's responsive, he's a dad, he's a father, he's a king, and he loves his people. Never know it. And so I, and I say that to God regularly, God, I'm honored that you saw fit that I did not enter this planet dark and without you and leave it the same way. That you care enough, bless your sweetheart, that you cared enough to bring me out of the darkness into your marvelous light. And I start talking the scriptures to him in Paulic language. I have a language of, you know, I give his word back, but it's in, it's in my love talk. And I tell him, I tell God, I was on my way to sleep last night, and I just began to talk to him. I said, well, God, you know, I know it's a lot of things I can ask you for, but I didn't. I took that time, and I just started telling him, but Jesus, oh, my. And I, I tell him, sweetheart, I am proud of you. I love you so much. Jesus, there is none like you. God, I'm proud to be your child. I'm glad that you're my God. I'm glad that you're my king. I'm glad that you're my savior. I'm glad that I've got the best God, that you're the great I am. I'm glad that you're near and not far. I'm so proud that you've kept this thing going. I'm proud of your restraints. You didn't wipe us out when you should have. I'm proud of your tender mercies, and I'm just so excited about you. It's, it does not bother me to praise you. And then I told him something. I said, you know, God, and I'm talking, the Holy Ghost is filling up the room. And I'm talking, I said, you know, God, I said, you think of all of the times that, that, you know, I, that I reached out. I said, God, I'm glad that I can touch you. I'm glad that you're my God. I'm so glad that you fight my, I am not, it's not a problem. I remember getting saved, folks. This is my intimate moment. I'm just letting you share, okay? I remember getting saved and thinking, how can somebody praise God continually? How can somebody can all day long, hallelujah, love you. When I used to hear those older saints say, yes, I just love you, Lord. I'm like, how do you know that? Why are you saying it now? Because your prayer is supposed to be in the closet. It's supposed to be on lockdown. It's supposed to be on shutdown. We're supposed to have it in a steel trap. You know, we can pull it out on time. We don't let God out in public. We don't pull him out in public all the time. We just kind of pick the time and we give him some pay dates. And so... I said, God, there was a time I couldn't think of how to praise you. I was a time that I could, and it would be so tight in my throat, and it would be tight in my spirit, but I did it out of obedience, because scripture said that we ought to praise him continually, and, uh, and forget trying to praise him in hard times. Are you kidding? I want to yell at him. I don't want to praise him in hard times. I want to tell him off, and so I was, I was never master that either, and so I couldn't do it. I really couldn't, and so I, I and then I said, but, and there was a time when you said, when you, when you just seek the Lord all day long and I couldn't think of it. I said my, my soul couldn't tolerate it. My body hated the idea. My mind balked at it and my heart just fumed at having to do it. And I said to him last night, I said, but God, that work that you did in me, when you broke down all of your enemies that are in me, all of the adversaries in me that are against you. I said, because now praising him every minute, uh, sweet, are you kidding? Sweet, we live a very close, very intimate life. We are talking all day long, everything. And I'm telling you, now Prophet Ashley is sitting here, and many of you probably don't know, but she stays with me. She lives in this house with me, and she can tell you, we don't play with Jesus in my land, not in Paula land. In Paula land, he reigns. And I told him, he's going to reign. You want to be glorified, be glorified here. You want to strut your stuff, strut it here. You want to be big man on planet, be big man on planet here. Because you are God. I want to celebrate him every day. I want, And I told him, I said, God, I just wish I knew other things to make you happy. And his heart warms. And so then God started talking back to me. And I was like, really? 
No kidding. You want God to do great things for you and you won't even give him a great time of day. God, need great, God needs great moments with you to know that you're not asking him to do all of these unusual things simply because you have access to him. Like, I don't exploit my relationship with him, all my love and affection. I really don't. I'm like, okay, God, this is what I want. Now, what do you think? What you got planned? But do you know there's a place you can touch him when he said anything you want and he means it? Not, here's something people don't know about God. This is getting good. Is this getting good? Hallelujah. Do you know God has his world and his service and his providence is so organized that God has angels that will yay and nay you before they ever get to him. Now, he knows by being God, being omniscient, he's picking up everything. But he, you notice God doesn't get in all your business with you, with you over your own people to your side. But when you get to that point where they talk about the, um, the holy of holies or, and you go into his court, into his temple, into his very presence, that's a different dimension. And it's a long, arduous, painful climb because God has very protective of himself and protective of his world and if you're not interested in protecting him he's going to take care of you providentially because that's what he does and a lot of times we've been running on providence and we thought it was personhood but god has a he has a whole system just like in our government we have a lot of systems that, that meet our needs every day a, a, a very you know responsibly because because god's a responsible god he honors his word to us and his duties why do you think he tells you to pray because your prayers have to go bypass his systems bypass all of those agents that he has and all of those uh, attendants and all of those providers that he has who do, who do this for him all the time okay dr frank i'm not sure if i believe that well god was taking israel into the promised land and they kept, they had the whole Baal Peor incident, which we'll talk about later tonight. And they had a couple other incidents. And finally, he says something that if you are reading with the Spirit of God, you can see his heart is broken. And he says, I won't be able to take you into this land. He said, because you're stiff-necked and you keep doing things that I don't want. So I won't be able to take you in. He said, I'm going to send my angel to take you in. He has to now pull back. Did he pull back on some of your lives? And he started putting a representative and a substitute in there. And so he said, I'm going to, I'm going to let, send my angel and my angel will take you into the land. He will fulfill my word to you and he will fulfill my promises to you. And he will give you all of these lands and he named all of the lands that they were going to get. And, um, and when he did, you know, cause this is, we're in Exodus now. And so they have, so if you look at Exodus 23 and Exodus 32, both times, I believe they mentioned it. And so when you go and you look at it, but you hear his heart and his heart, he said, because if I stay with you, I will kill you along the way. And that wasn't a threatening word. That was a, I hit the place where my own self-preservation and my holiness can stand no more of this. And so he said, now, don't mess with my angel, because I know just because he's an angel, don't think you can bully him. Don't think you can just push him around. Don't think you can blow him off. He said, because my name is in him. And he will not pardon your iniquities. So God has delegated. He always has delegated authorities. Is this helping somebody? Delegated. So he had to delegate that massive project that he wanted to do personally. There are things that God wanted to do in your life personally. But you, your decisions to work with other people, your decisions to hold on to old habits, your decisions to, to, to get into relationships and alliances that were going to be offensive to him, made God have to switch out. He pulled back and he sent a substitute. He fulfilled the word. But all of the warm and fuzzies that you thought you'd get out of it didn't come. Why? Because you made him have to send a substitute in his place. There are things that God wants to take personally. He wants to handle personally. But sometimes he has to do this. That's why he has an innumerable company of angels. He has angels do, doing more than just making you feel real warm and fuzzy and giving you tingles in church. God's angels are busy agents. They're working they're working staff. They're fighting staff. They're guarding staff. And they take care of his business. But there's a time if you walk with Jesus, because you know Jesus is for the vintage. 
you know, you got to be vicious with the Lord because he is the mature man. And he's so mature, you just can't treat him any old kind of way and act as if he hasn't been around forever. I don't care if he died at 33. He's still an ancient of days. And our problem is we're still treating him like a 33-year-old man and who is a kid to us, and he's the ancient of days. And so <clears throat> there's a time when you, can, when you can make God feel so good about you and so warm inside where you just warm his heart that he begins to tell everybody let you through let him through come on let him through and he knows that you're not going to violate his holiness his secrets you're not going to go and blab every kind of thing so that you can get on television and go get your little television show talking all these deep things that nobody can do anything with anyhow there are certain home things that you just don't tell in public but we tell our, our devotional things about God all the time we uncover him and I tell him that. I say, now, Jesus, I want to take care of you. I know God can take care of God, but do you know what? I can take care of myself, too, but guess what? I need an Ashley. I need a, 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 a beautiful daughter named Tala. You know, I need my team. They, I can cook, but they can do it better. Or they can do it, yeah, well, okay. I can do things for myself, but the point is, so there are a lot of things God can do for himself, and he's got angels to do for him, but you know what he wants? He wants to know what your love wants to do for him, because there are things that your love for a person wants to do for them. There are ways that your love wants to take care of a person. There are offerings that you want to give just strictly because of love. Now, I paid my tithes and gave 2% offering. He doesn't, God doesn't care about that. God cares about how much you are interested in him, his interest, what he's doing, how sensitive you are to what he's going through. He may not tell you all of his issues. Thank you, because um, we can't survive. Hallelujah. But, but, when you really love someone, you they don't have to drag you kicking and screaming to do anything. Because you do it. You do hard things for people you love. You do impossible things, things you wouldn't do for another person because it's something about where they touched your soul. Some of y'all have too many soul ties with other things. You can't tie your soul to God. You're going to have to unload a lot of soul ties because God is holy and he's going to be number one in your life. And so, but, and I told him, I said, Jesus, have you ever said, I'll, t I'll tell you what I said. You want to hear what do you think, Prophet Ashley? You think they're oh, yeah. here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You sure? Oh, yeah, I'm positive. I said to God on several occasions, I said, God, I want to cover you. And I want to take care of you. And I said to him last night, I said, God, but you know, you want a lot for me. And I think it's wonderful because you're my God and you're my dad and you love me and all of that. I said, but God, there's some things I want for you. When you love somebody, there are things you want for them. There are good things you want for their life, for their experience, for their world. We want to have a better experience with God than we want to give him with us. We don't really think about what is God's experience with me right now as his child, as his leader, as his apostle, as his prophet, as his pastor, as his evangelist, as his missionary, as his intercessor, as his, uh, as his um, deacon and elder. What is God's experience with you? You want to demand he give you a good experience. What do you do? What steps do you take to give God a good experience with you? Because those are the things that guarantee he never stops. He never, you are, we're on it. What the Bible said, we're on his mind all the time. I got a lot of things on my mind. And a lot of us got bratty kids on our mind and loving kids on our mind. Well, he inscribed us on the palm of his hand. Yeah, and some of us, we can't put it down. But that doesn't mean the experience is all that great. Do you want God to have a good experience with you? Do you want it just to be your little 15-minute devotions when I played three songs and, and, and read three scriptures and then I said 20 seconds of prayer? Well, you know, those are your duty, and God will honor duty. But he goes really, really out of the way for devotion. And then he enjoys devotion. But baby, when you endear him, when he knows he's endeared to you, there's nothing you can ask. He will cover you. What did he say about Job? You see my servant Job? Nothing could touch Job. Anything Job wanted, he got. And everybody said, well, you know, that was because 
No, mm -mm. that was because, but well, you know, God, that's how God is good. No, God had a lot of people that he's good to. God has stages of goodness. He doesn't have one big bad call, good God, though, to everybody. He's good to everybody, but not the same thing is not in every bag. But God, Job has so improved his relationship with God and so enriched his experience with God and God's experience with him. God had to brag to his number one adversary. You see my servant Job. And God couldn't give him enough. And he couldn't do enough. And yes, God has people he gives amazing material things to because that's part of their calling and it's a resource. Sometimes your wealth is just an accoutrement. Sometimes it's just an implement. Sometimes it's just a tool. It's not because it's not a statement on God's affection for you his, or, or, or your relationship with him. Because he said there, is, there are people that he makes wealthy and add no sorrow to it. And so if your wealth comes with sorrow, you need to understand that's a resource, it's a tool, and it's an implement. Because when God, he said when he wants to make you happy, he moves all your enemies. He said, I make all your enemies to be at peace with you. When a man's ways please the Lord, all your enemies will be at peace with you. So a lot of you all are wealthy and you're all excited about being wealthy. And you know what? You have no peace. When, it's re when your relationship is the product of God's affection and God's response to your affection, you have peace. You are peaceful. You're pleasant. You're not contentious. You're not vulgar because you have met that strata of God, that dimension of the Lord where his kingdom, culture, and consciousness prevails. But that takes a while. It's a climb. And this, I know for me, from 1982 to now, I remember saying to God just about a couple of years ago, I said, you know, God, I need it all 30 years because you are really something to have to, oh, Lord, because he is who he is. God can't change. And as affectionate as he is, as tender as he is, as indulgent as he may be, he's still holy. And see, we think that intimacy with people is to weaken their resolve and to change their character and to, and to, to um, drop their standards. We, For us, love is an, a weapon. And it's a weapon that we use because it gains access to people's vulnerability. So you think that God's love for you will cause him to, to open wide his vulnerabilities to he's not. God's self-preservation is very strong. He's got, because it's a lot riding on God could make, continue to be God till Alpha and Omega till this world is over and the rest of the things he has in place happen. But see, to us, we like people to fall in love with us to make them vulnerable and indulgent to have our way with them. That's not God. God wants partnership. He wants companionship, friendship. He wants interactions and relational. He wants mutual responsibility. We don't ever think of how to have a mutually rewarding relationship with the Lord. We just don't. He has duties and responsibilities to us, and we have this one duty to make sure he keeps his word to us. We keep God on assignment. He's always on duty, and he's always on assignment. And that's important, but that's the only part of it. What do you think, Prophet Ashley? And how about my periscopers? Share some of them. I like to hear from them. Oh man, they they uh well somebody said that they are uh they've learned more about the mind of God since following you. Amen. And Thank I you. think that's a beautiful statement mm -hmm. that applies to a lot of people. Amen. Is learning his mind. We have uh, heard about the heart of God. The Father. The Father, his lap. Come sit on his lap. But well, we really haven't been taught how this man thinks. And I think a lot of preachers have bought into the notion that it's not for us to know. Yeah. It's just not for us to know. I'm thinking, well, what's in all that whole Bible? A lot of books. A lot of words. Goodness. A lot of words. If I went to school and they gave me 66 books. <laughs> and said, so it's not for you to know. And, for, and said, it's not for me to know. First of all, why am I here? <laughs> Secondly, if they said, well, these books, nobody ever understands. Revelation, nobody gets Revelation. Second half of Daniel, nobody really gets that. Okay, Chronicles, First Sin Chronicles, that's boring. Numbers is all about, well, numbers. <laughs> and that's boring, too. And, and so, you know, we just skip around. And, well, we like the fun stuff. So we'll read some Psalms, because it's cool. A little Song of Solomon, if you want to get a little risque. <laughs> and do whatever. <laughs> And that's kind of it. And if we took the mentality that we have outside of the church and applied it to any career, it would sound absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The things that we say we should not know or understand about our God. It's embarrassing. I went to school for four years to be medical. But, you know, when I went in, they told me, this is not really for you to know. It's complicated. It's difficult. It's going to hurt your head. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do all these things and pay. You're going to have to pay a really big price 
for this. For and so, you know, I don't know. It's really not going to be worth it. We, nobody, you don't say that. Mm -mm. And if you do, it's said with pride. Oh, you're going to pay. Oh, no, I was up. And what do we say in our career? I went to school for 10 years and I didn't sleep for 20 years mm -hmm. and I did 30 mm -hmm. years of homework and I'm still paying off that debt. Mm -hmm. And you're proud to say it. Oh, yeah. It's a vote. Proud to say the sacrifice that you have given for the reward, hopefully, mm -hmm. that you're receiving from that sacrifice. And uh, when you were just going through about the Lord and, and how sometimes we put him in a position where he has to step back. That's a sad moment. There's a lot of feedback coming up <laughs> on that one. about that one. And just that it's the uh, enlightenment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, oh, so that's what happened. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. I'm sending my angel, like you said. I remember reading that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I thought, ooh, you can do things to God that make him, won't, uh, that make him say, close. gotta go. I'll honor my word. You'll still get there. Okay. I won't be with you, and it won't be the journey mm -hmm. that I had in store. And when you said today that there are things that God wants to do himself for some of us, mm -hmm. we are not taught or we're not aware to value mm -hmm. and cherish and protect our relationship with God or even recognize when he has stepped up personally to do something. Say it, say it. How many times over the years have we seen, we train prophets, non-prophets, whatever, people, and they had no idea until they met you in a pile of tears that it was actually God mm -hmm. who was walking with them the whole step of the way, and they did something, said something, mouthed off, lipped off, had a temper tantrum, a meltdown on him, and he was done. He was done. He was hurt. Mm -hmm. And so he was done. And because we don't recognize when God steps up, because it's not for us to know, the <laughs> mind of God and how he does things, we are continually mm -hmm. tripping up and hurting this man's feelings mm -hmm. and doing all those things that uh, set him back. Because if we're set back, he's set back. That's true. We know how that is. I mean, we have this whole thing about your life. How many people have said, well, God knew not to give that dictionary assignment to me because I'd have never done it. Mm -hmm. Not realizing how many people say I'd have never done it, which is why it's taking him so long to get three big things done in 25 years. Okay. 50 years in the body of Christ or on the planet in general. That's a great word. And you know, Ashley, I want to say something. You mentioned something I think is very, very uh, pivotal. When I got saved, I so wanted to go to ORU, I wanted to go to Rama. I wanted to do all these things, and God said to me, um, he said, he'd say no, and I would cry, because I wanted to be like everybody else. The number one thing you need to recognize is that when God touches you, he's not touching you to leave you like everybody else, okay? He's touching you to lead other people. And so I didn't know about that, because remember, I'm, I don't know church, I don't know God. And I'm like, but everybody said, I could do it. Now, I could read this Bible and almost quote it in six weeks. I knew this thing front for back. But now I'm ready to go because everybody's like, but yeah, but it doesn't matter. Unless you have this course, unless you have that course, you won't be accepted. So I go to God, God, I want to do this. I want to do this. God, I want to do this. And he said no. And I would cry. And I mean cry. And one day, the Lord Jesus Christ said this word to me. I will never forget it. And I... From that day on, we didn't have that battle. He said, I can send you to any one of my prophets to train you. He said, and they're all good, but I chose to train you myself. Mm. I was like, oh, Jesus, wait a minute. <laughs> no, wait, no, wait. Hold on, hold on. No, wait. No, but I didn't mean to. I, ooh, I, and I knew because, see, we're so accustomed to people telling us how to avoid God's anger that we don't we don't even consider how to avoid hurting him and offending him. And so I said to him, so it took me two years for those of you who think God doesn't want you to go to school. Let me tell you something. That's a hard thing. If Jesus is your one-on-one -on -one teacher, it is hard. It is not easy because he is going to move everybody out of your life. He knows whether you're not going to cut school because he never goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. You're not going to not do homework because he never goes anywhere. He's going to realize that. He will He will literally move people out of your life that will obstruct his purpose and obstruct his goals. He will cut you off from family. He will cut you off from friends. He'll cut you off from history. He'll only keep you in destiny. He will stop you from doing this and stop you from doing that if you give him a 
temper tantrum, he will whoop your behind and you will know it. I don't care about what folks say God doesn't. My Bible says God chastens those he loves. So I'm sorry about that. That's Proverbs and Hebrews. So if you say that God is going to train you himself, I'm telling you he's going to clear the deck and clear the board and clear your life. The best thing you can do is let God send you to school and, uh, and get it through a substitute because he already said, I don't tolerate God's standard is what he is. God's standard is not some, something he put on a paper. It's not a code. His standard is his soul. His soul is the standard. How he feels, how he thinks, that's his soul. And he articulates that. And then when he wants to disseminate that, it becomes a code. But in the beginning, it's just his character. God is a very tough teacher. I remember I would sit there, I tell the story quickly. I'd read my Bible and I didn't know a word. And when I didn't know a word, I would say, I don't know that word. And I would just go on to read. The Holy Ghost would pull back. And eventually it would get very, very cool. And I said, But well, God, and he said, Do you know what that means? I said, No. He said, Then look it up. So I did it. I looked it up a couple of times. So then after that, when I didn't know what it meant, he would just stop moving with me. And I would, he would, I mean, the class would stop that moment. And if it took me five days to look up that word, that's how long he was silent until I looked it up. And then he would resume. And as he gave me an assignment, I had to do it. Are you okay with how that looks? Are you okay with that? And I would say, well, yeah. So finally, it wasn't until, actually, I don't know, maybe I was in this thing three years before I realized that I was a founder and I'm a catalyst and I was bringing in something that didn't exist. So God watched over that thing like a hawk. Man, he did not let that thing go south. And when people would come in and tell me, Dr. Price, God said you should do this and you should do that and you should do that. I'd go to God. God, they say I should do something because I'm, I'm still a kid. God, they say I should do He said, uh-uh, you follow me. What did he say to Moses? He said, what they said is what they said. But as for you, you stand here with me. You stand beside me. God never let me play. And though there are people who are listening to me and people who know me who go back 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I've been at this thing for 34 years. And they will tell you, God never let me slack. When I decided to get myself a couple of coverings, because everybody said you needed some coverings, God killed those relationships. He said, I'm the one. You're following me. I'm doing a new thing with you, and you're going to let me do what I want to do, and I don't want anybody to, to taint it. What you get from me today is 30-plus years of God being watchful and, 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 I mean, zealous. I mean, really zealous and intolerant. He did not tolerate certain things. And if it looked like something was going to contaminate his stream, he moved it, shut it down. But you know what? I didn't resume it. When I felt like every time I had to make a decision, he said, okay, you, uh, am I going to do this or are they going to do it? Who's going to do it? I, I mean, they asked, well, why, how has it been so difficult? Because the cost of doing it his way for me was horrible, but it was necessary. And I had to pay the price. And I couldn't even begin to run the list for 30 years. And these, these women who have stayed with me for these 16 years, they bought into the same Excellence. God said, I, when I release this, I want it pure. I remember thinking, well, God, I could just give this to so-and-so. I didn't give it to them. I gave it to you, and you will do it. Well, God, I'm going to ask so-and-so, I don't want this one to touch it. I don't want that one to do it. I want to do it my way. And I would have to hear that. But you know what it takes to hear God speak that? Maturity and trust and faith. Some of you all, God just went silent because he couldn't communicate his thoughts because you wouldn't receive them. Because you would vilify him, you would criminalize him, you would criticize him and complain. And I didn't. I said, well, you got it. This is what you want. This is what you want. Now, did I see this? No. Actually, you know we didn't see this. But I'm telling you, and every time, like Job, God tried Job in every area of his potential and his prosperity. Because he had to prove to his adversary, God had to prove to Satan that Job was all that God already knew he was. Satan needed to see it through Job's devastation. God already knew it through elevation. Prophet Ashley. Wow. Did you have any closing comments, my beloved? Yes, wow. <laughs> she said, yes, wow. <laughs> One of your people said, send me to school, Jesus. <laughs> see, that's an honest soul right there. That's a real honest soul. Send wow. me. Ooh, Jesus. Well. I guess it's time for Prophet Adia. Listen, we gave her a softer cushion to step out on. Yeah. She should be fine. We'll see. Okay. And I want to tell you all, now, if you're in uh, the, the Chicago area, I'm going to be in Joliet in August, which is not too long from now, with my beloved daughter, Apostle 
Nona Parker at Antioch Christian Assembly. You now don't come talk about Dr. Price. We need you here, and then you don't come there. Say that. I want you to show up, and I want you to do more than just be sayers. Be doers of your word. Watch over your word to perform it. I want you to show up. I'm going to do. I'll be doing both of them. We'll have. Uh, discipling apostolic Christian and prophetic ed. If you have a prophetic company in the region, you have intercessors and, and all, send them because I'm doing prophetic ed for my time there. Prophet Adil will give you that information and I hope to have Apostle Nona on the phone with me shortly. Um, so tonight. Tonight, tonight, okay, tonight so she can tell you a little bit about what we're doing there in Joliet uh, because it's powerful. But guys, if God sends a gift, don't miss your time of visitation because visitation is in people. It's not, just, it's not in a calendar. God's time of visitation is in people, not in a calendar. A prophet idea. Oh, by the way, by Periscope, amen, amen. And when she's done, before she does her <laughs> announcements, I'm going to sign off on Periscope. But right now, I want you to hear what she has to say, because you know she's always going to give us her thoughts. And then after that, you can migrate over to Blog Talk Radio. Okay, sorry, Prophet Adir. You got it. All right, all right. Can you guys hear me this afternoon? <laughs> yes. Very clearly. today. Prophet actually picked up on so many things. Um, I think one of the things you said so important to be interested in protecting him, um, be interested in his interests. Um, I love what you said about how you came to him, just, um, just giving him his time and space. And I think that that's so important. So I want to thank you for sharing that. I'm sure that I share the thoughts of all of your listeners today. Um, again, every week, uh, helping us understand how to know him better, helping us understand how to tap into him better, and um, and to really understand what he needs and how we can be there for him so that that communication does not cease. So I love that. Thank you for that. Um, that's what really struck me today. Do you want me to go ahead and move into the announcements piece now? Yes, a uh, by Periscope, see it. Uh, wait a minute. Go to Blog Talk. Go to Blog Talk Radio. Uh, okay, tell them how to get to Blog Talk. Give them the number, Prophet Adia. So if you want to call in or listen to the callers. All right. All right, guys. If you're catching us on Periscope Live, you want to call into Blog Talk so you can finish the show. 